afternoon class. The topic before us this afternoon is carbohydrates chemistry. It is an important module in the course General Biochemistry with course code BCH211. We all know what carbohydrates are. I believe the word carbohydrate is not strange to us. Right away from our elementary days in school, you must have been taught what carbohydrates are. Either has energy giving food in a basic science or in the general biology class. And today, we're introducing general biochemistry to you and picking on an important aspect of it, which is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates have been described as important nutrient that its major role is to give energy, simply described as energy giving food. That is the food that contains carbohydrates. And considering the part of continent that we have as Africans and mostly Nigerians, carbohydrate foods are staple foods among the Nigerian populace. If I should carry out a random assessment of what we ate this morning, I'm quite sure the majority of the class members must have fed on carbohydrates. And that's an important predisposition factor that has its own merit as well as the merit that most Nigerians are predisposed to carbohydrate metabolic disease in one form or the other. At the same time, it also helped them to be able to withstand to some extent in the management of such thesis. So you are welcome to the class today. And I believe at the end of the lecture, the following models will be well understood and would have gone beyond the templates of understanding carbohydrates as just giving energy alone. And what are the models before us? The definition and classification of carbohydrates, we shall be talking on monosaccharides and discussing the chemical reactions. Then disaccharides, polysaccharides. And also polysaccharides will be described in two forms, homo polysaccharides and hetero polysaccharides. Then sugar derivatives. Then there are some structured questions that at the end of this lecture, I want the questions to be answered by you all the students and get it submitted. Some two hours after the lecture. By definition, as I said earlier, that anybody from any discipline would have one or two things to say about carbohydrates. Even when we have a businesswoman, they will tell you that the food gives power. 
when you ask a banker, he will tell you, is it not energy giving me food? But today, we'll be describing carbohydrates according to its functional constituents. The groups that are present that are responsible for its activities. We'll be describing carbohydrates according to its composition. Those groups that are present in them. So we can describe carbohydrates chemically that contain mainly two functional groups, the carbonyl group, which is either aldehyde or ketone, and the number of hydrozyl groups, which we consider to be polyhydrozylic, or the copper that can be hydrolyzed to either of these groups. According to figure one, showing the polyhydrozylic nature of carbohydrates, the linear structures of carbohydrate compounds are in display. We have the glyceride This is a three carbon compound. We have the hydroxyacetone, another three carbon compound, but of different functional group. Glazihad contains all, all those group Y that goes in acetone contains ketone. Then we have the ribose compound, which contains the four carbon compounds. Then we have the glucose compound, which is the most common or the commonest among them and we call it exos sugar because it contains cis carbon considering all these linear structures we can see that from the glycerite dehyde we have two numbers of hydrozy groups for the hydrozy acetone we have two number of hydrozy groups in the four carbon compound, which is ribose, an important constituent of our DNA. Or genetic material, we have four hydroxy groups. One in glucose, which is the SO sugar. We have five hydroxy groups. That is why it is considered to be poly, as polyhydrozylic compound that is carbohydrates. A classification of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates can be broadly classified into two sugars and polysaccharides. The sugars can still be classified or further broken down to monosaccharides, which is a monomer. Where the saccharide is a dimer. Monosaccharide means this sugar that contains only one unit. For example, glucose is a monosaccharide. Fructose is a monosaccharide. Galactose is a monosaccharide. Ribose is a monosaccharide. Trial sugar that contains the glyceride as well as the hydrozine acetone, they are monosaccharides. Then the category of the disaccharides shows that in their composition, they contain two different units of these monosaccharides. It can be the same, like glucose, glucose in the case of maltose, or can be different, like fructose, glucose in the case of sucrose, the table sugar as well as galactose fructose in the case of lactose, the mixed sugar. Then the other category is the polysaccharide, which is polymers, that it contains 
several numbers going to 100 of these monomers in their composition, in which we have the starch, we have cellulose, and we have the glycogen. The starch contains alpha amylose and amylopectin, depending on the food. For example, rice or research sativa comprise of 25% of amylose and 75% of amylopectin. While in maize, it is the way around. A kind of a different proportion, but same constituents, but different proportion to that of rice in the sea maize. Monosaccharides is being defined as the simplest carbohydrates that cannot be actualized into simpler carbohydrates. They may either contain an aldehyde or ketone groups that is, is the simplest monomers that when polysaccharide is being actualized, broken down, is being broken down into the simpler ones, the polymers to the monomeric units or monomers. So they may either contain an aldehyde or ketone group. They may be called aldoses or ketosis. For example, a 5 carbon monosaccharide having aldehyde group. Aldehyde group is called aldose pentose. And 6 carbon monosaccharide containing a ketone group is called keto azose. Table 1 shows common monosaccharides that are available or that we are familiar to or that are commonly used or have values and applications. Depending on the number of carbon atoms that is present in them, the one with three carbon atoms is known as trials sugar. The one with four is known as tetrose sugar. The one with five carbon atom is known as pentose sugar. The one with six carbon atom is known as exose sugar. However, depending on the group that they contain as monosaccharide, those containing aldehyde are known as aldotrousis for three carbon. For four carbon is aldotetrosis. For five carbon is aldopentrosis. For six carbon is aldoesosis. In which we have the molecular formula assigned to them to the respective groups as well as their structural formulas. So examples of the hydrotransosis that has three carbon atoms, they are the one that we mentioned, I mentioned earlier, the glazier aldehyde. The one with ketone group is the, the hydrogen acetone. And we have all these categories mentioned in the table. These monosaccharides, there are some chemical reactions that they partake in. Basically, those with the adiadic group undergo oxidation. Glucose gets oxidized to glucuronic acid with mild oxidizing agent like bromine water. Only those with aldehyde group, CHO, that is affected. A strong oxidizing agent like nitric oxide oxidizes both the terminal groups, CH2OH, and the CHO groups. Then glucose also 
react with tonic reagent to give gluconic acid. The tonic reagent, tonic reagent is ammonica silver nitrate, and also react with ferric solution, which is alkaline copper solvate. Other reaction is acetylation with acetic hydride or acetyl chloride. Fructose forms pentaacetate. Reaction with methyl alcohol. Fructose reacts with methyl alcohol in the presence of dry HCA to give methyl fructoside. A reaction with metallic hydroxide is also noted element analysis and molecular weight of fructose show that it has the molecular formula c6h12o6 just like in the same category of the common exos sugar like glucose fructose on reduction gives sorbitol this reaction indicates that six carbon atoms in fructose are in a straight shape. And other reaction that fructose, like glucose, undergo is oxidation with nitric acid to give glycolic acid and tartaric acid, which contains smaller number of carbon atoms than fructose. So this shows that a ketonic group is present at position two. in their structural formula. It is at this point that the molecule is broken. Another classification of carbohydrates according to the structural formula shown earlier is disaccharides. Is disaccharide a dimer that comprises of sucrose, maltose, and lactose? All these have the same molecular formula, which is C12, H22, and the oxygen atom there is the level. For sucrose, lactose, and maltose. Another group of disaccharides, dimers, that are silent are trisaccharides. Example is raffimose. Having 18 carbon, 32 hydrogen atom, and 16 oxygen atom, and tetrasaccharides, which is start use. Start use. In which the carbon is 24 atom, the hydrogen is 42 atom, and oxygen is 21 atom. Then we have the polysaccharides. Aside the other categories that are considered to be sugar. Carbohydrates that yield a large number of molecules, more than 10 molecules of monosaccharides on hydrolysis, they are the polysaccharides because they contain several, up to 100 of units of these monomers, of their constituent monomers or the monomers that build them up to the polymeric stage. The common examples are starch, cellulose, glycogen. And from the structure displayed here, we have the cyclic structure the monosaccharides 
can't exist in either linear structure or in cyclic form. As shown earlier, during the polyhydrosidic nature, in, in the polyhydrosidic nature of carbohydrates, glucose can be seen here in the linear form from the structure displayed as well as other monosaccharides. And also, they can exist in the cyclic form. As we have the monosaccharide glucose here, the dimer disaccharide, as well as we have the amylo starch in alpha 124 glycosidic bond, the linkage from carbon 124 of the other one of the other monomeric unit. Polysaccharides are long chains of monosaccharides. Each monosaccharide is connected together via glycosidic bonds to form the polymeric structure known as polysaccharide. Polysaccharides are the largest component of biomass. It is estimated that more than 90% of the carbohydrate mass in nature is in the form of polysaccharides. So, I'd like to discuss the functions of this polysaccharide. Since without this monomers or dimers, this polysaccharide cannot be formed. And these functions include that they play vital role in energy storage and other cellular fuel source, such as glycogen and starch, form in which glucose is stored in human body, glycogen, as well as in starch, that is, in plants, in form of starch. Polysaccharides help to maintain the structural integrity of the organisms, such as cellulose, help to maintain structure in plants, giving support and giving shape. Sheeting is chief component of animal exoskeleton. Polysaccharides are also present in extracellular space, such as in animal tissue, that helps in maintain shape, supports, cells, tissue, and organ. Polysaccharides are an integral part of cell-to-cell -cell communication and cellular recognition. And types of polysaccharides, there are two types of polysaccharides. We have the homopolysaccharides and you have the heteropolysaccharides. A typical homopolysaccharide has only one type of monosaccharide units in the chain, whereas heteropolysaccharide is composed of two or more types. For example, in homo, it can be glucose unit that links with another glucose unit and links with another glucose unit, several hundreds of glucose units just as we may have glucose linking up with fructose and joining galactose in the case of heteropolysaccharide. In both types of polysaccharide, the monosaccharide can link in a linear fashion that it can form a straight chain like amylopeptin, or it can form a branch of complex case like it can form a sorry, it can form a straight chain like amylose, and which is from alpha one to four glycosidic bond, linking together like that, and can form a branch of complex link like amylopectin, where the straight one 
at if I want to form glycosidic bond, then a branch one at if I want to cease glycosidic bond, we also join. The difference is a consequence of the mechanism of assembly of the polysaccharides. Yes, the one that goes straight in the linear form and the one that attach as a branch. So, another linear one. Whereas, the one that goes straight does not have any attached one or have any other type that forms a, 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 a complex arrangement that is just linear. Everything is straight. From one, link at alpha glycosidic bond to the other. Link to the other one at the alpha glycosidic bond. Not the one that from alpha glycosidic bond to another glycosidic bond will now join the glycosidic bond at alpha one to six glycosidic bond as against the normal alpha one to four glycosidic bond in the straight manner. So the difference there is the mechanisms of assembly of the polysaccharide. Another important topic that appears to be non carbohydrate but are carbohydrates due to their partial resemblance They partially resemble sugar as also resembling alcohol. We call them sugar alcohols. So these ones are placed under the sugar derivatives families. Sugar derivatives family. They are neither sugars nor alcohols. They are combined with a chemical structure that partially resembles sugar and partially resembles alcohol. We are conversant with them. We meet them in our daily life, on daily basis. There are things we appreciate. There are things we take for fun or just use as part of social lifestyle or activity. A majority of them are mostly used in preparation of children medicine like syrups. Having this resemblance with either sugar or alcohol has not made them to be sugar or alcohol and yet they don't contain alcohol or ethanol beverages. They are incompletely absorbed and metabolized by the body. And consequently contribute fewer calories. Being that carbohydrate is known to be the, the major goal or the principal function in the body is energy production. And this energy is in form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So being that they cannot be completely absorbed and metabolized, fewer calories are obtained and may not be considered to be major source of, or important source of calories in human body. The polyhols commonly used include sorbitol, manitol, salitol, multitol, multitol syrup, lactitol, erythritol, isomite, and hydrogenated starch hydrolysates. Most are approximately half as sweet as sucrose, that they are not. notable when it comes to sweetness 
that even the sucrose, which is the table sugar, that we take at home for our tea, as well as our gari. I even want to add something that this sucrose, in terms of reactivity, is a lemma and can be considered to be the only non reducing sugar. Because in its natural form, it will not react with failing solution or those reactive tests like glucose we react to, except if it is hydrolyzed. It's broken into its constituents. Monomers. Montitol and salitol are about as sweet as sucrose in the category of the sugar aquas. They are about, but not actually as sweet, sweet as sucrose. Sugar aquas occur naturally in a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, in which fruits and vegetables are good sources of these sugar aquas, but are commercially produced from other carbohydrates, such as sucrose, glucose, and starch, artificially produced, they naturally occurring in food, fruits and vegetables. Along with adding the sweet taste, polyols perform a variety of functions, such as adding bulk and texture, providing a cooling effect or taste, inhibiting the browning that occurs during eating and retaining moisture in foods. While polyols do not actually prevent browning, they do not cause browning either. In the same category, under sugar, alcohol, or derivatives, chewing gum, gum drops, and add anti, pharmaceuticals, and other health products, such as throat lozenges. Throat lozenge. Lozenge, cough syrups, children's chewable multivitamins, toothpaste, and mat watches used in food for special diet purposes. All this one can be considered and classified under sugar alcohols. Thank you for your time, and I hope you all understand today's teaching, that the lecture is properly delivered. So I want you to go through the slides and bring out the areas you don't understand or you are confused or the areas you need more explanation so that we can discuss on that in our next lecture. However, before our next lecture, there are social questions that I put here, that I want you to submit before our next lecture. Thank you for your time and have a nice day.